Hi, I'm Amit Mehra. I'm a filmmaker based in Bombay, Mumbai, India. Uh, and we're really kicked, we're really happy to be part of uh, Stuttgart uh, India International Film Festival. This is actually our second year. Uh, we were part of it last year as well, uh, where I made uh, one of my recipes, uh, vodka chicken chili fry. I think it's still up on the, the festival website. You can go and check it out. We also have uh, our own food show called The Slow Fire Chef. So you can also check out our shows, uh, The Slow Fire Chef on YouTube. This year I'm making one of my favorite uh, recipes. Uh, it's called Kiba Pao. Uh, this is a very popular recipe in Bombay. And uh, it's actually had for breakfast. But uh, in the north we generally have Kima, which is mincemeat, you know. So it's a recipe with mincemeat. Uh, it's generally had for lunch or dinner. But in Bombay, it has become popular as a breakfast. So it's very unique for uh, that. And uh, pao is Indian bun. So it's a good combination. Uh, pao bread with keema, minced meat, uh, which is fried with uh, onions, tomatoes, and some spices. I'll show you all of it. Fairly simple to make. And I'm making it uh, with goat meat, minced goat meat. Uh, you can make it with any meat of your choice, the same recipe. Kima pao, like I was telling you, is, is really popular as a breakfast dish and, and it's, a, it's actually a very popular breakfast in Bombay and uh, used to be a regular with me when I was uh, many years ago, many moons ago when I was an assistant director and uh, so it also brings back a lot of memories from my uh, younger days and uh, yeah, so I'm very happy to share this recipe with you. Let me quickly introduce you to the ingredients going into Kima and uh, you know there I've divided it two one is what is going to go in the cooking and then there is a fairly uh, uh, variety of uh, garnishing that is a must that adds to the taste so I'll show you both let me show you the cooking one first so minced meat this is around half a kilo 500 grams uh, just two of us over here to eat and uh, don't need more than that about the quality and the type of mince that is best suited for this recipe is take the mince of lean part of the meat you know uh, so in goat we take the front leg which is leaner than the back uh, leg so similarly for you know whichever meat you're using just use the lean part avoid the fatty parts you need some onions uh, onions need to be chopped small like this and same with tomatoes some spices so you have bay leaf you have cinnamon you have some mace some clove and green cardamom and you have to break the pot and get the seeds from inside turmeric some black pepper uh, ginger garlic paste some cumin powder coriander powder some salt, red chili powder. So the pao, the Indian bun, again very unique to Bombay. Though now I understand it's available all over India, but maybe abroad as well. It became famous from Bombay. It's like a bun and they just slice it from the middle and they put some butter in it. They toast it with butter and then they serve it with variety of things over here. So they will be like with some potato fritters or something called pao bhaji which is again a potato curry or uh, with keema. So it's a very unique bun which is like a small squarish bun. Now we have uh, actually made this at home. Uh, my wife uh, Simanti, she has made this at home. She does all the baking. These are actually uh, smaller in size than the regular ones that you get in the market is uh, slightly bigger. Uh, but we just wanted it like this. Uh, and this is made with all-purpose flour, uh, some salt, some sugar and uh, also a little bit of uh, butter oil let me tell you the garnishing part because that's a lot of stuff that goes into the garnishing which uh, the recipe is not complete without it there's again some finely chopped onions there this will be garnished with raw onions some butter cubes some 
fresh lemon wedges, some green chilies, thinly sliced green chilies, some fresh coriander, some fresh mint, and this is pickled ginger. Pickled ginger actually is a very good pickle by itself and I love it. It goes very well with curries and you know lentil curry or uh, meat curry, chicken curry or uh, any kind of food and uh, it's made at home and it's again very easy to make. Cut thin slices of ginger, fresh ginger, chopped uh, green chilies, sprinkle some salt over it and just soak it in some fresh lemon juice and the minute you do that it, the ginger will immediately turn pink as you can see it's pinkish anytime you want to eat it it's a nice uh, very adds a nice thing to your meals just take it out and eat it I have taken two different utensils to cook it in the reason being I'm dividing it I'm frying the keema the mince uh, separately and I'm frying the onions and tomatoes separately uh, sorry the tomatoes separately with the spices and then I'll add them to the mince uh, and the onion fry and then mix it together and let it cook you can do that or you can you know just cook it uh, one by one uh, fry it one by one if you want I'm just doing it this way it's faster it's easier and also it gets fried much better when you fry the meat uh, without the tomatoes and then add the tomatoes once it's at least halfway there. So the first thing we do is put some bay leaf, put all the whole spices, cardamom, the cinnamon and uh, the bay leaf, the clove, the mace, everything into it. On slow fire just saute this a bit before adding the onions. In this one, just put the tomatoes. The onions. Mix it. And let it fry. You have to brown the onions. So in the tomato, add all the spices, little salt, you add a little salt in the onions and the mince as well, the coriander powder, the cumin powder, black pepper, turmeric and some the red chili powder. Spread it out so that all the tomato gets nicely fried. By the end of it you want a nice spicy paste uh, made with tomato. And the onions, you need to fry the onion a bit. And once it's got more or less close to brown, you add the ginger garlic paste. If you add it now, it might burn. Now we wait. I'm just covering it so that it gets cooked faster been around 5-7 uh, minutes and uh, I think the tomato uh, paste is almost done. There's no need to overcook it because it will also cook with the mince. So I'm going to shut this off and let's check on the onions. So onions have started turning pink and this is the time that we add the ginger garlic paste that should be enough so it's been around 10 minutes and as you can see the onions have become quite brown. The rest of it is of course going to also get fried and cooked with the mince. So I'm going to add the mince now. And I'm going to add some salt to it. Just 
a little oil, mix it well. Just let it cook on slow fire. Uh, you will have to keep it dry. Uh, there is no curry to this. We might add a little water right in the end, but uh, essentially it's cooked and fried dry. So uh, you might have to, you will have to actually come and check on it after every three, four minutes so that it doesn't uh, burn and you have to keep on stirring it, keep on stirring it till it fries really well and it's well done. So it's been around 10 to I would say around 10 to 12, 15 minutes and uh, I think the mince is uh, suitably brown. We're going to add the tomato paste that we made, the spicy tomato paste. Mix this and just a very little water. We'll just scrape up all the the goodness of all spices and everything of the tomato, and then add this water. on slow fire. I think uh, it will take another 10 minutes maybe so 10 or 15 minutes and it should be fully cooked. The goat meat does take a little longer uh, than uh, say other kind of meats uh, and uh, so you need to be generally we actually cook it in the pressure cooker but uh, there's a different taste to it and uh, I prefer the taste when we make it in the deep dish pan. And so it takes a little longer, but the taste is much better. So it's been 10 minutes uh, since we last checked on the mince and uh, I think it's done. Nicely brown in this cook. Now I'm just going to add First I'm going to take out the bay leaves, they are not required anymore and the last thing that we add is garam masala which is uh, essentially a mix of ground uh, whole spices like cardamom, clove, all kind of stuff. Alright, so I'm switching up the gas and uh, we'll move back and start garnishing it and then we'll taste it. Its fragrance is amazing. We'll do garnishing and uh, there is double garnishing involved here. One is some amount of garnishing that we do to the entire keema in the bowl and then we also put some garnishing every time we serve individually. Add a little butter. Little coriander, little green chilies, a hint of fresh lemon juice, and then individually when you serve uh, all this, uh, you add the onion, the raw onion on top of it and you can add more butter, you can add more chilies depending on individually uh, who likes to have it how. But this garnishing is uh, crucial to the actual taste of this particular recipe of Kima Pao. So uh, let's taste. Mince. Don't be scared to add a little oil, that's where the flavor is. I'm going to garnish it a little. I love butter, so it's going to have a little more butter. Yeah. Then you're going to have some onions. Mm. 
some fresh mint. more coriander, some more green chilies and a little more pickled ginger and now time to break some bread well this is the pao just break it like that that's your one pao it's a two pound. I'm ready to eat and you have to eat this with hand. You can't eat it with fork and knife and things like that. You can't be detached with your food. You have to get into it intimate. So this is how we do it. You dip your pow, your bun into the keema. Take some of the garnishing and then Mm. Mm. This is heaven. I'm right now, you know, food is a time machine. Mm. Finger licking. I'm right now feeling like I'm back in my 20s and we're just sitting in one of those cafes in Bombay with my friends and we're eating Kima Pao. It just transported me there. It's really, really a delicious thing. The meat has browned really well. All the spices, the flavoring is strong, but the actual flavoring, the actual spice element is quite low. And even that red uh, chili powder, which I put a, quite a heap full of a uh, teaspoon of it, but actually it's not that spicy. It's very flavorful and uh, <coughs> And the, there's a nice undertone of that rusticness that's coming out of, you know, all the spices that have been cooked, all of them, the, you know, the cumin powder, the coriander powder, and all of it. And the kicker is, of course, all the garnishing that we have added, the butter, the green chili, the coriander, mint, everything. So I think it's a lovely recipe. I'm going to now get down and eat this seriously. Uh, so you guys uh, hope uh, you guys enjoyed this and uh, I hope you're going to try it you get mincemeat everywhere in the world and uh, all of the ingredients are fairly uh, available everywhere so you can make it and uh, uh, have fun and have a good rest of the film festival enjoy and catch you again sometime